Special remembrances being held from New Mexico to the nation's capital today on this Memorial Day. We're breaking down what you need to know. And a budget battle, what city council is now proposing, could put more money in some city employees' pockets. We'll tell you who. Also underwater, a large stretch of the country already reeling from deadly flooding braces for more storms. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to KRQE News 13 this morning. I'm Adam Atchison. Good morning, everyone. I'm Crystal Gutierrez. Today is Monday, May 25th, and on this Memorial Day, we'd like to remember and honor our fallen heroes. Our thoughts are also with our families this morning. A lot of them will be heading out to cemeteries, heading outdoors today to honor them. Will you need an umbrella? That's yeah, the question. Right, that is going to be the question. While you were sleeping, rain fell across the metro last night. Here's video just into our newsroom of some of that weather. Drivers hit wet roads on Central and other parts of the area. As we mentioned, are the rains going to put a damper on your outdoor Memorial Day plans? Kristen Curry has the very latest on that for us. Kristen. Good morning, guys. Want to start with some good news. Take a look at that sunrise that we're starting our Memorial Day with. Gorgeous out there as that sun peaks through the clouds and continues its rise. Now, when it comes to the temperatures, a little cool out there. 48 degrees here in the Duke City, even colder up in the mountains down to the freezing mark in many places. But notice the winds. The winds are light right now, looking to stay about 10 to 20 miles per hour this afternoon out of the west. When it comes to the temperatures today, plan on the mid 60s by lunch later today. High temperature of about 71 degrees here in the Duke City with the spotty showers and storms moving in after lunch. Now, when it comes to the headlines, temperatures are still below average today. They'll get to the 80s starting Wednesday, but the spotty showers are something we're going to have to watch as it is likely that lightning is going to be a threat many of us face outdoors today. The temperatures warm up through midweek and another storm is on the way for the weekend. We'll break down that full Memorial Day. Day forecast coming up here in about 10 minutes. And that rainy month of May continues. Here's a look at what we had to deal with yesterday in New Mexico. Dark clouds hung low over the Duke City as drivers hit wet roads. This video was posted to our Facebook page by a viewer. You can see the rain and hail coming down hard on drivers on I-25 Sunday afternoon. And in the south, the residents are preparing for another round of weather after a weekend of deadly flooding. Take a look at this video here. The raging waters just sweep up that SUV in San Marcos, Texas. The city suffered extensive damage over the weekend when heavy rainfall caused a local river to top its banks. The raging river destroyed roads, wiped away hundreds of homes, and sparked dramatic rescues. Officials in Wimberley, Texas, are now searching for several people that are still unaccounted for this morning. In Austin, a kayaker had to be rescued. The rain also soaked portions of Oklahoma, making this month the wettest on record for some cities. Now, to see the latest photos and related stories on the flooding in Texas and in Oklahoma, download and log on to our KRQE News app. Happening right now, road closures near the area where a water main break led to flooded streets. This happened at Candelaria and Vassar. The line broke early yesterday evening, and Albuquerque police say at the time they closed down the area. They said the drivers could expect delays until that break has been fixed. Police in Albuquerque end a SWAT situation before the suspect gave up. APD says they were called to a home near Pennsylvania and Constitution for a domestic dispute yesterday morning. They say that a man was allegedly threatened to have a shootout with police. Police say they spent hours trying to negotiate with him. He was set up on the roof of the home. APD says they did finally give up after finding all of the other members of the home safe. They say they're going to summon that suspect to court. We turn out to this this morning. A convicted killer who dumped her dead husband's body at the Albuquerque Sun Port is starting her life sentence. According to the Daily Courier, Laura Stelmasek was sentenced to life without the chance of parole for her role in her husband Craig's murder. In 2011, she had her lover Marzette Ferris kill her husband, then leave his body in a van at the Sunport before he flew to meet her in North Carolina. Ferris has also been convicted and is serving life without a chance of parole. KRQE News 13 has learned that the Albuquerque City Council is making more room for pay hikes in its proposed version of the budget. Under the half billion dollar spending plan, APD officers would get a one and a half percent raise, firefighters a three percent raise, and transit and security workers a four percent raise. Those are larger raises than the mayor proposed in his budget. Councilor Pena's plan acts as retention bonuses used to keep veteran APD officers. The council is set to vote on the budget on Wednesday. And now we're going to turn to a live look at the New Mexico Veterans Memorial in Albuquerque. 
As we do that, we want to let you know that in just a few hours, people are expected to gather to honor the men and women of the armed forces who gave the ultimate sacrifice. As you can see, not a live look, but still some very cool video. And meanwhile, the capital in the capital city, hundreds are expected to gather at the Santa Fe National Cemetery for a Memorial Day program to remember and honor all military members who served or are currently serving our nation. Today's Memorial Day program will be led by keynote speaker Congressman Ben Ray Lujan. And in Santa Fe, more than 39,000 soldiers do rest at the National Cemetery there today. People from across the state will pay their respects and they will find more than 39,000 flags, one at each grave marker. This, these are pictures rather from last year of the annual tradition. Memorial Day weekend is the only time a flag is placed on each headstone. Let's turn to Washington, D.C. A special tribute to the nation's veterans roared through the Capitol over the weekend. The annual Rolling Thunder Ride for Freedom kicked off yesterday. Hundreds of thousands rode from the Pentagon to the National Mall, drawing attention to veterans' issues, including prisoners of war and those who are missing in action. Some of the riders in yesterday's rally were from New Mexico. Developing this morning, police in New Orleans are still investigating a deadly officer-involved shooting. That officer was gunned down early yesterday morning. Authorities say a 46-year-old housing authority officer was found shot. The driver's side window was smashed and New Orleans police say the cruiser was still in drive. It rolled for at least a block before hitting a curb, then stopping. Police say it's unclear what the motive was for the killing. At least 71 people are arrested following protests in Cleveland this weekend. The demonstrations began on Saturday after a judge acquitted police officer Michael Brello accused of killing two unarmed people in 2012. The pair was shot and killed by Cleveland police after a high speed chase that involved more than 60 police cars. When that chase ended, 12 officers fired more than 130 shots into the car, including Brello. He says he and his partner felt threatened. And take a look at this new video this morning. It shows a massive tanker fire in downtown Detroit. It happened early Sunday morning. Authorities say nearly 9,000 gallons of unleaded fuel went up in flames and seeped into the sewers, sending thick black smoke into the air. Wow, look at that. It's so impressive. Michigan State Police say there was a mechanical issue with a truck, which may have sparked that fire, and it got a lot of people slowing down and taking video of it. That's incredible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Scary moments. A crowd watches as this man falls from the sky over the weekend. How he's doing this morning. Also. If the people of New Mexico could just pray for those kids. Tragic accident. A crane tips over with four children on board. What neighbors say happened. And today, on this Memorial Day, we remember our nation's heroes, the fallen servicemen and women who gave all for our country. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to KRQE News 13 this morning. I'm Krista Gutierrez. And I'm Adam Atchison. We are glad that you're with us on this Monday, May 25th, Memorial Day. We're going to start this morning with the rain that we've gotten in the past few hours. While you were sleeping, that rain fell across the metro. This is video into our newsroom this morning of some of the weather. Drivers hit wet roads on Central. So is the rain going to put a damper on outdoor memorial plans? Kristen Curry is tracking the answer to that question all morning long. Kristen? Good morning, guys. Yes, we do expect another round of the showers and storms to build in this afternoon. We'll start, though, with a live look up at Red River Ski Area. Some sunshine filling in over the northern mountains and even here in the metro area, a mostly clear sky as we speak. But again, those clouds will start to build as early as around lunchtime. So the temperatures are in the upper 40s with the partly cloudy sky. More so mostly clear now, but later today, plan on about 64. That's your noontime temperature. Keep in mind, yesterday we had a high temp of about 69. So today will be just a little bit warmer. 71 expected here in the Duke City with some spotty showers and storms to be dodging later on this afternoon into this evening. Now that will be for a good portion of the state. The further up to the north and west, the better your shot of seeing a shower today. We're drying out tomorrow. Wednesday will be a little bit more windy, but the temperatures are finally back into the 80s. We should be looking at 82 degrees when it comes to the climate for this time of year. So we'll have more on that forecast, show you where we expect those storms to fire later this afternoon, coming up here in about 10 minutes. And while our rainy May continues, here's a look at what we had to deal with yesterday. Look at the dark clouds. They hung low over the Duke City as drivers hit wet roads. A sight all too familiar. This video was posted on our Facebook page by a viewer. You can see rain, even hail, coming down really hard on drivers on I-25 yesterday afternoon. Remember, you can help us tell the weather story with your pictures and videos. Send them. We will share them. Just upload your pics and your video through our KRQE News app. 
We're going to turn out to some developing news this morning. Authorities are on the scene of a semi crash rollover. It happened just west of Albuquerque on I 40 near mile marker 139. That's near the Route 66 casino. We're told that the driver was taken to UNMH with non life threatening injuries. Authorities this morning are urging drivers to, to avoid that area if possible. Crews are working to clean it up, but they anticipate it'll take several hours to clear the roads of that crash there. We're going to continue to monitor that traffic traffic situation. Again, westbound I-40 will bring you the very latest as it becomes available. Also developing this morning, three children are fighting for their lives after a devastating crash involving a cherry picker. A man and a boy are already dead. It happened near Juan to Bowen Central. Neighbors tell us that Ken Rastrick, a professional tree cutter, was giving some kids a crane ride when a gust of wind caused that crane to tip over and fall nearly 40 feet to the ground. Inside, Rastrick and four other children. I saw Ken. He was at the control uh, panel. Uh, I saw him lean in front of the boys and when it, he, it fell, unfortunately it cost him his life. Police say that machine was not secured to the ground when it fell. Officers say Raschik died at the scene, the 12 year old at the hospital. As for the other three, at last check, they were still in the hospital with unknown conditions. Neighbors tell News 13 those children were Raschik's grandkids. We turn out to this a scary find near Santa Fe turns out to be a dud. Santa Fe police say it happened earlier this week near Rao, south of Pecos. Two men were walking on the Mesa when they stumbled upon this. It's a rusty bomb. They loaded it up into their SUV and drove it into town before calling police. The Air Force determined, though, it was inert and sent it to the Kirtland Air Force Base. No word on how it got there, though. This morning, homeowners can breathe a sigh of relief after police say they finally caught this guy who was on camera breaking into homes. Anthony Chavez was arrested on Friday. Police said the 24 year old is behind at least two home break ins caught on camera. One near Lomas and Morningside back in April. He had a gun in that burglary. Then he hit a home in Siesta Hills. Police say a series of tips led to his arrest, and that surveillance video helped ID him. Neighbors are now relieved. Hopefully he'll be there for quite some time so that we won't be uh, running around and watching our backs. So police say he is also connected to other crimes, including stealing a car. Yes, sir. KRQE News 13 has learned that a repeat criminal is in trouble with the law again. According to a criminal complaint, Casey Williams and her boyfriend broke into an APD bait car near Manal and Carlisle and tried to run when police caught up to her. Last year, Williams was arrested for leading a Corrales officer on a chase in a stolen vehicle. Both crashed. The officer was seriously hurt. Charges in that case were dropped. Williams was arrested again in March when police say they found her in a stolen car. And just as summer break starts, so does the vandalism on school property. Vandals hit a South Valley Elementary School over the weekend. At least a dozen windows around Kit Carson Elementary are broken. Doors are now boarded up there. We reached out to APS to see if vandalism has been an issue at the school. We have not heard back from them yet. A New Mexico woman hit by lightning while on a motorcycle has died. Kalina Genzo passed away in the Lubbock Hospital on Friday. She was on a motorcycle trip to Ruidoso with her boyfriend May 15th when a storm hit. Jinzo was a mother of three. She worked for Sandia National Labs. Her partner was not injured. The Red River Biker Rally went off without a hitch this weekend. State police say they did not run into any problems there. Several hundred members of the Bandidos head to the rally every single year. Well, law enforcement stepped up patrols to look out for any trouble this year. The concern stemmed from a deadly biker gang shootout near Waco, Texas last weekend. Nine people were killed there. At least 170 people were arrested in that incident. So happening today, many will hear that emotional song as we honor our fallen heroes. If you've ever been to a military funeral, you know exactly how powerful those 24 notes can be. We're talking about the song Taps, and we wanted to know what it's like to have that responsibility. News 13's Catherine Mazone spoke with one of the few buglers in the state to find out his story. She joins us live at the New Mexico Veterans Memorial with more. Catherine. Good morning, Adam. Now you have to understand this sort of responsibility. A lot of pressure on these buglers is the last tribute that the family and friends will hear of their fallen soldier. When the ceremony starts and they start calling out the names of the deceased and everything, I get tear, uh, a little tear eyed. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe I don't blow taps the way I should because I get 
David R. V. Hill is a Navy vet and a bugler. He says he gets choked up sometimes at the retiring of flag ceremonies, but he says when it comes to playing at funerals, he doesn't get too emotional. He can he has to play it perfectly, and now he's done hundreds of ceremonies. The Hill plays for several New Mexico Honor Guards, and he says he's one of the few buglers left in the state. He says this is all volunteer work, and he doesn't need any money in exchange for playing. They come up and they say, you know what? They don't know my name or anything. Ah, man, that was beautiful and everything. And I tell them, thank you. The honor was mine. Now, there are now bugles with inserts inside of them so that people don't know how, how to play the song perfectly in order to get it right. Now, that's because there just aren't that many buglers left. And like I said, you can't really make any mistakes when it comes. That's right, Catherine. Thank you so much. And B. Hill does say he's happy to teach anyone who wants to learn how to play how to do that. We turn now to a live look out at Washington, D.C. on this Memorial Day morning. As you can see, soldiers have spent days at nearby Arlington National Cemetery, placing more than 200,000 flags for fallen soldiers. A lot of people are out there remembering their loved ones. President Obama will lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at the cemetery today. Another Memorial Day observance will take place at the World War II Memorial. That's also in Washington. There are a lot of events planned to honor our fallen servicemen and women in our state too. among them a Memorial Day celebration at the New Mexico Veterans Memorial in Albuquerque starting at nine at the Santa Fe National Cemetery. Congressman Ben Ray Lujan is scheduled to speak at a ceremony beginning at 10 for a full list of events and closures. You can go to the KRQE news app with Memorial Day comes outdoor pool season. This is video of the Rio Grande pool near the biopark. All eight of the city's outdoor pools are now open. They will stay open until August 9th. Every Sunday, kids 17 and under can swim for free. OK, take a look at this new video this morning. A hard fall sends a veteran skydiver to the hospital. John Pitts was skydiving at the Red, White and New Show in Winchester, Tennessee. As you can see, he was approaching the ground on Saturday. His parachute got tangled in the power lines right there. Oof. Wow, he does fall. Spectators horrified as they watched it all unfold. Pitts somehow, though, made it out. OK, I was wonder what he was thinking in those moments too. You know, I don't I mean, know if you could even think no, during that moment. It all just happened so fast. The good news is that he's going to be just fine this morning. That's, That's great, right? Mm -hmm.